The last one, Anna Alonso, Luna de Planche, Carolina Urrich, Luna de Bon Maria Costa, Chen Mao, Chen Mei, Mao, China. E allora, dopo che mi fai Mao Mao, andiamo a presentare l'olandese, Yes of Yet, Royal Dutch Team, che dovrà il numero 53, è già pronto con 52, il rumeno Petro Cinga Gheorghe, Romania, e poi avremo il giapponese, pettorale 51, Norio Coderà. Ancora? Come no, sono passato da 9 2 a 10. A 12. Ok.
concentrati per la loro qualità che hanno già ottenuto il risultato con le colleghe e altri assieme anche della moglie di Cassari che anche loro hanno fatto una bella sprint conoscono anche il percorso ma insomma insieme ancora con la moglie qui qualche bene di salto un po' di difficoltà di salto possono avere e quindi ovviamente bocca al lupo per il nostro Angelo a qualificazione signori state assistendo a una promozione Fondazione Cordina questo spettacolo che assegnerà le coppe
Good morning. Hello. Welcome to the Vert Motif ISMF World Cup Finals 2024. It's a beautiful sunny, but with some clouds, day here in Cortina d'Ampezzo uh, in northern Italy. And we are thrilled to be here for the third of four races in Cortina this week. We have seen the women already qualifying. The men are just finishing off just now. And uh, I can give you some facts. Here we go. Starting at 2,075 meters, 36 steps. There are 70 meters of elevation. And the actual length of the course today is 746 meters. It's a pretty straight up, straight down very sort of straightforward, one of the more straightforward looking courses that we've seen this year. But I hear there is a very big jump underneath, well, I don't hear, I see <laughs> there is a very big jump underneath the 80K banner just before the end, which will show, uh, separate the good from the great here today in Cortina. Let me tell you what has happened so far. In the women's, we had Emily Harrop as the fastest run this morning uh, in the qualifications, three minutes, 24-21, followed by Margot Ravinel, also of France, 3.34-44, uh, and then Ana Alonso Rodriguez, the third fastest qualifying time this morning of 3.37.01. We had 50 women on the start line, four DNS, three from the United States, I'm sad to report, Kelly Wolf, Hilly Haifman and Grace Steberg, as well as Tove Alexanderson of Sweden. The men have started, uh, have finished their qualifying. And as we see here, this is what are the, ti the timings are going to be for the semifinals, 11.32, 11.44 for the men, and then 12.07 and 12.13 respectively from women and men for the finals. Uh, before that, we will be kicking off with the first heats in just under 10 minutes. And let me tell you, 75 men were on the start line this morning. Two DNA, two do not start, Jakub Sjanik of Slovakia and Remy Bonnet of Switzerland. There we have Emily Harrop who has had a great weekend already. She had a great weekend. She was third in the overall, which took the third place in the vertical top three for the season. She was second in the individual race two days ago behind Axel gachet -Molleré. And she takes the overall win in the individual and has sealed her overall World Cup title as the overall winner. The third in a row, only she and Leticia Roux have achieved such a feat. Now that is somebody to be on the same level as quite, quite impressive. In case you were wondering where we are, we are in Cortina d'Ampezzo, which is just the most stunning, stunning part uh, it's right of Italy. It's right in the Dolomites, in the heart of the Dolomites. It's extremely popular in both summer and winter. And in June 2009, UNESCO declared it a World Natural Heritage Area. As you can see here, it's just utterly stunning. I can tell you it looks equally 
and differently stunning in the summer and autumn months. Really, really beautiful. The Wide Valley is second to none and surrounded by iconic peaks such as the Tofane, Faloria, Cristallo and the Cinque Torri. And these are some scenes from the individual race, which was on Sunday, which was won by Rémi Bonnet and Axel gachet -Molleray. It was also, you saw just at the edge of your screen there, Werner Marti of Switzerland. It was his final World Cup race. He has retired from the Swiss Schemo team and he came in second in the vertical on Saturday and takes the second place for the season overall. What a great way to finish his extraordinary career. He has been in the with Swiss Schemo team as a, since a junior, since 2008. What an incredible, incredible career he has had. And uh, it's my great pleasure to wish him an extremely happy retirement. He won't be retiring altogether, but just from the Swiss Schemo team. So the sprint race is fast and furious. Six people on the start line there in every heat. We have five heats with 30 athletes qualifying from the qualifying rounds. Skins then onto feet, again skins, and then skiing down to the finish line. From those 30, we get to two semi-finals. Uh, sorry, we had the quarterfinals, the heats, the semi-finals, and then the finals. Not forgetting, of course, the lucky losers who come through from the heats to the semis and the semis to the finals. Don't worry, I will make that more clear as we go through. But that's a very quick run through. What is the sprint course? As I said, the fastest, well, the fastest woman today was uh, Emily Harrop, 3.24. The fastest man was Thibaut Anselme. But let's go back to the women. That was Marianne Faton. Emily Harrop, there she is. A punchy, punchy first heat coming up for the women. Just the last few minute, few minutes of preparation there by the SMF team. Look at that view. How fabulous. Abba de Silvestro, what a season that Italian athlete has had unbelievable she finished second in the overall vertical i beg your pardon in the vertical cup for the second uh, uh for she had two second places in the globe she was also second in the individual rankings for the season she of course had her first win in Andorra earlier this year. And here we have it for the first heat. Emily Harrop of France, Marianne Faton of Switzerland, Marta Garcia Fares of Spain, Anna Kufer of Slovenia, uh, Giulia Campagnoni of Italy, as well as her compatriot, Samantha Bertolina.
and they're off. This is the first of the heats for the senior women here in the final a sprint of the season. What a long season it's been. We started in November in Val Terence and we are now in April in Contortina d'Ampezzo in Italy. Emily Harrop goes off to the right there, Mayan Faton to the left, Anna Alonso in on the right behind uh, Emily Harrop. I beg your pardon, it's Marta Garcia Fares. Getting my Spanish uniforms mixed up there, my apologies. There is Emily Harrop, just slightly ahead of Marianne Faton. Marta Garcia Fares goes right with Emily Harrop. Here we are, Emily Harrop has taken a good lead there. Again, ahead of Marianne Faton, who is nearly three seconds behind her as they go into the boot pack. And it's Marta Garcia Fares and Marianne Faton. Boot for boot or slightly just oh there Marianne Faton putting a bit of a boost on as they get in to the stairs there all 36 of them in the last section on skins Emily Harrop Marianne Faton Marta Garcia Fares Mayan Faton there managed to make quite a, a little bit of a, a catch up there on Emily Harrop. Yes, 134. She was nearly three seconds down at the last split timing. Need to be in the top two to guarantee a place into the semis. As it's Emily Harrop of France ahead of Mayan of Switzerland. And there we are, there's the jump. And away they go through the gates and round into the finish line. Heat number one. Emily Harrop, followed by Marianne Faton and Marta Garcia Fares. Giulia Campagnoni, fourth. That is Rhea Kobo. Slovenia. Formerly a United States athlete. Eugene Lamu, Eugene Lamu of China. Julia Morada of Italy. Celia Peria Pesce. Two top five finishes in the vertical and individual for her this year. In the overall for the season, Lena Bonnell, France. <laughs> Lea Ancion Havet. Andorra, the 
final athlete in this heat. Here we are, ready for the second heat here in Cortina d'Ampezzo in Italy. Final sprint racing of the 2024 season, the Work Modif ISMF World Cup. You can see on the left there of your screen that jump. It may not look terribly much here, but uh, it's uh, quite impressive. And uh, on skinny skis, not really designed for jumping, it, can't, it is a bit of a challenge. So far, so good though. Second heat here. Celia Peria Pesce ahead of Julia Murada by 48 seconds. Lena Bonnell of France in behind them. Eugène Lamou, Eugène Lamou of Battery China. Is low. They are Ancien Havet and Le Corbeau. But in 10 it seconds. is. Celia Peria Pesce. Julia Murada just battling it out there with Lena Bonnell. There we have Julia Murada just creeping up there behind Celia Peria Pesce. Oh, little slip there, but it is still Celia Peria Pesce ahead of Julia Murada. Lena Bonnell just in behind them as they went through that last checkpoint. No, no, I've done it here. Go ahead and the drone, you can stay here. As they ski down, and it looks like it's a bit of a going to be a bit of a battle there for the second place. Lena Bonnell, hot, hot on Julia Morada's heels. Oh, I should say the other way around. Julia Morada, hot on Lena Bonnell's heels as Celia Peria Pesce comes over the jump without too much trouble. Takes a quick look behind her. But it looks like it's going to be France and France. Celia Peria Pesce takes the win there ahead of Lena Bonnell. Julia Morada goes into third. Landing.
There we are. We are looking at the third heat for the women here in Cortina d'Ampezzo. Tatiana Paller, Mariana Yigichkova, Katya Mascherona, Lisa Moriskini, Sarah Dreyer, and Sulong Kujen, Sulong Kujen of China. Quick last drink of water there for Katia Mascarona as she gets to the start line. Now, I heard that Mariana Yegichikova is has not been feeling on her best form. She's had flu. She's here on the start line, but uh, and obviously has qualified. Sarah Dreyer, freshly off her second year in a row, winning the Vertical Globe for the season. She was second behind Axel gachet moraret on Saturday in the Vertical. Swalan Kujen, Swalan Kujen of China, Sarah Dreyer of Austria. Home point updated. Katia Mascherona of Italy. And Tatiana Paller of Germany. Lisa Moriskini of Italy. And last but very much not least, Mariana Jegocikova of Slovakia. And they're off. This is the third heat of five. Let's see how much ta uh, Mariana Jegocikova can do today. Not showing any signs of illness right at this very second as she takes off neck and neck with Tatiana Paller of Germany. In behind them, Swolong Kuzen of China. Tatiana Paller and Mariana Yegochikova in neck and neck as they come up this end of the first part of the skinning section. There they are. Come up to the boot pack. Swolong Kujen of China in behind her. And behind them, I beg your pardon. Only 12 seconds, point one two seconds, I beg your pardon, uh, between Mariana Gichkova and Tatiana Paller, but experience showing through there a bit of a quicker translation, uh, transition into the boot pack section, boot part of the race. And you see Mariana Yegochikova doing the sort of traditional, if you like, her best practice right to the front of the transition box there. Quick look behind her. She's not something you normally see her doing. So starting to feel perhaps that flu she's recovering from as Tatiana Paller overtakes her. And I think she might just be thinking to herself, well, I only have to be in the top two to qualify. So let's see how I can uh, minimize the effort in order to stay in that top two. As Tatiana Paller end to transition. And Lisa Moriskini, Tatiana Mascherona, as Tatiana Paller and Mariana Igochikova take off down the hill. And 
into the jump. Here we go. Tatiana Paller of Germany takes the third heat in 3.25, exactly. Mariana Igachikova of Slovakia, second in behind her. Katia Mascherona and Lisa Moschini, both of Italy, take third and fourth. And here comes Sarah Dreyer of Austria. And finally, it was Suolong Kujen of China. And see there just where, as I think I was saying that Mariana Yagutikova decided that she would just stay in second to keep her energies, guarantee herself a place in the semi-finals, and let, and uh, not maybe let, but uh, Tatiana Paller got ahead of her there. So here we are, heat number three. Ivona Janusik of Poland, Johanna Hemer of Austria, Alba Di Silvestro, De Silvestro of Italy, Thieb Dessin of Switzerland, Margot Ravinel, second fastest time of the qualifiers, and Lulu Ji of China. We have had a Chinese athlete in, we have a Chinese athlete in four out of the five heats. Fantastic to see them being represented here. As we just saw there, Lulu Ji, that was Alba de, Sil de Silvestro, Margot Ravinel, Johanna Hemer of Austria, Tib Dessin, Switzerland, and Ivona Janusik of Poland. Both Alba de Silvestro and Johanna Hemer were in the top five for the vertical and individual overall this year. So perhaps not their specialities here, but still exceptionally strong athletes. As they head off, Ivona Janusik of Poland, Polish Air Force officer, currently on sabbatical while she uses her time to train full time now in Skimo with Johanna Hemer hot on her heels. Of course, Johanna Hemer giving us all leaking eyes uh high emotion in schladming earlier this season coming in second on the vertical race there behind her compatriot sarah dreyer uh, there wasn't a dry eye in the house as the austrian women absolutely dominated that race but this is a very different kettle of fish shall we say a very different style of race it's all out it's hard and it's fast but it is also very technical and very much shorter with short recovery times for the next round if you do get through Ivona Janusik there a great lead there widening up between her and Johanna Hemer Margot Ravinel in the red helmet and French uniform behind her Thibaut Dessin of Switzerland behind her Two and a half seconds now at that last timing. Up into the boot pack, and Ivona Janusik of Poland has a great lead over Johanna Hemer. Margot Ravinel coming hot in behind them, though.
And it's going again a shake. Takes off there. Some very good transitions. Jana Hamer behind her. Margot Ravenel just coming out to transition now. Jana Hamer just sitting on. She's gathered about uh, a second or so on Ivona Janosic since the last split timing. But as we know, you only have to be in the top two to guarantee the place as Ivona Janosic heads out down the hill. Johanna Hemer hot on her heels. And I suspect Margot Ravinel will be in the running for one of the lucky loser spots to get in to the semi-finals. That jump is going to be interesting when there is, uh, as we've seen just here, a little bit of argy-bargy for the uh, finish line between these two. As Ivone Janosic takes the win ahead of Johanna Hemer, Margot Ravinel of France, Thibaut Dessin of Switzerland, here comes Alba de Silvestro of Italy. And just coming up to the finish line there, Lulu Ji of China. Neither of the last two lucky losers in the last two heats will, sort of the third place, I beg your pardon, will make it through. Not quite as fast rounds as the first two heats, which were very, very much quicker. Uh, between the first third place, which was Marta Garcia Fares in the first heat, and the most recent one, Margot Ravinel, 10 seconds. So a very much slower heat there. But Ivone Janosic and Johanna Hemer through to the semi finals. Well, this is ripping past this morning. Here we have the last of the women's heats already. Anna Alonso Rodriguez, Laura de Planche, Caroline Urich, Luna Dupont, Maria Costa Diaz, and Sheng Mei Mao. Switzerland, two from Spain, two from France, and one from China. There we are, Sheng Mei Mao. Maria Costa Diaz. Luna Dupont, youngster from France. Caroline Ulrich who won her very first sprint senior title in Val Torrance this season, Ana Alonso Rodriguez. And lastly, Laura de Planche. And off they go. This is the last of the women's heats here in Cortina d'Ampezzo. We've had four so far. This is the fifth and final heat for the senior women. As Caroline Ulrich goes out in front of the two Spaniards. And it's neck and neck. It's a tight battle as they go up through this set of diamonds. Oof. Caroline Ulrich absolutely powering her way through there. I believe that's who that is. Uh, a little bit dark, but uh, I think that is Anna Alonso in the lead. 
Caroline Ulrich in behind her, if I'm not much mistaken. Uh, it is indeed. And Alonso Rodriguez of Spain, Caroline Ulrich of Switzerland. 1.26 seconds between them, Laura de Planche of France, Maria Costa Diaz of Spain, Luna Dupont. Oh, and this is a battle. This is indeed a battle between Spain and Switzerland. Look at them. But Caroline Ulrich, perhaps slightly taller, the longer legs helping with the two steps at a time, and has put in and it, a, quite a good lead there. It's absolutely not in the bag. I mean, both of them extremely experienced athletes. Oh, Anna Alonso taking a little bit of time to get herself clipped into her skis there. And she will not want Laura de Planche catching her up at this stage, that is for sure. She just needs to stay at least in behind Caroline Ulrich in order to get to the next stage. And Caroline Ulrich takes off down the hill. With Anna Alonso out behind her. Jump, no problem. And in she goes to the end there. Caroline Ulrich ahead of Alan and Alonso Rodriguez. And a bit of a battle here going on for third place. Who's going to make it? Who's going to make it? Anna Alonso, uh, Martina, <laughs> Maria Costa Diaz takes it just ahead of Laura de Planche. And that was the last of the women's heats. Arguably, I would say one of the most exciting. I didn't quite grasp what happened to Caroline Ulrich between her early lead and having to absolutely elbow her way through those diamonds but elbow her way she did and took a very convincing victory so i would say that going into the semis from the heats in the women's will be marta garcia fares and julia morada that is my by my calculations they are the fastest third place athletes and we've just seen there we've got the men lined up here Tokutara Shima of Japan Luca Tamazoni of Italy Florian Soutel of France Arno Lieta of Switzerland. Inigo Martinez de Albornoz Marquez of Spain. And in the distinctive white uniform of Norway, Hans Inge Klette. This is a going to be a fast heat this is the first of the men's heats here at the final sprint race of the season in Cortina d'Ampezzo Christine Cavanier the course commentator giving us 20 seconds to the start Arnold Lieta taking a nice look at those big long strides 
as he takes a convincing start there over Inigo Martinez. As they head into the diamonds, it is Arno Lieta. Inigo Martinez catching him up, though. As they head to the second set of diamonds. Lieta goes left. Inigo Martinez goes right. And Inigo Martinez pulling just ahead of Arno Lieta as they come up to the foot part. Point one nine seconds between them as they come in and it's all gonna come down to the transitions in this race, I think. Inigo Martinez, but let's not forget Brian Sotel coming up fast on the outside there. The very long legs of Arno Lieta sometimes make a big difference in this section on the boot pack and the steps, especially when they're nice and even like that. He's still in behind Inigo Martinez of Spain. Takes a quick glance. Inigo Martinez as Arno Lieta comes out ahead. There was a slip there. Oh, it's going to be a push here as Florian Sotel sees his chance. It's going to be a very interesting and exciting finish here of this first heat for the men's competition. Hansen Akleta comes in behind, but these three are off. And Inigo Martinez gets in ahead just of Arno Lieta. Florian Sotel of France in third. And we will see it's so difficult to overtake on these courses unless somebody makes a mistake, goes wide, falls, but it is tricky, putting it mildly. As they come down here, and it comes down to the skating. Oh, and it's Inigo Martinez ahead of Florian Sotel with Arno Lieta into third place. Oh my word, that was exciting. I would love to see that again, that is for sure. <laughs> because that was a fantastic race, especially by Florian Sotel, who was third all the way along and really, really, powered through there to come in second behind Inigo Martinez. And I can tell you that Hansi Ngakleta was fourth, Luca Tomazzoni fifth, and Tokutaro Shima of Japan was sixth. Start list of heat number two, Florian Ulrich, Loïc Dubois, Herman Derbertolis, uh, Rocco Baldini, Paul Verbniak, and Trim Dalset Loen. Lo Loduen. Trim Dalset Loduen, and my apologies. And there he is, the man himself, a second Norwegian in the heats, Paul Verbniak of Austria. Florian Ulrich, one of the fastest qualifying times of today. Louis Dubois of Switzerland. Herman de Bertolis of Italy. And Rocco Baldini in the same Italian uniform.
just getting ready now. Erbniak there of Austria. Sitting third in the under 23 rankings behind Robin and Thomas Bussard in first and second. And 14th overall in the senior men rankings. And away they go. Paul Verbniak there had a little. And it wasn't Florian Ulrich, a little tiny slip there, but it is Loic Dubois of Switzerland who heads off there. The different styles there. Loic Dubois running and uh, Rocco Baldini of Italy. Much more sort of a, a long stride gliding in. But serving them both well, their respective styles. of Switzerland is sitting seventh in the under 23 category for the season. They don't get their own podiums anymore, but they do amass all their World Cup points go towards their own category at the end of the season. It is Switzerland from Switzerland. Lo Florian Ulrich, head of Loïc Dubois. Absolutely powering up this hill. Luke Dubois in behind him. The Swiss, of course, had a phenomenal men's result in the, in the vertical on Saturday. Top three were all Swiss, and I think it was five out of the top seven were Swiss. Uh, it was an absolutely blinding day for the Swiss team in the men's category. It's Brian Ulrich. Fourth fastest time of qualifying in the men's today. With his compatriot, Loic Dubois, just behind him. Rocco Baldini, followed by Paul Verbniak, Herman de Bortolis in fifth. Brian Ulrich with a nice cushion of a lead here. Okay. Loic Dubois in behind him. And it's going to be tight here. As they come to the line. But I don't think they really mind. But it's Lu so it's Loic Dubois who takes first, Florian Ulrich in second, and Rocco Baldini takes third for Italy. Paul Verbniak in fourth, Austria, Herman de Bortolis, and Jim Dalset Ludoen. Cave face there on Florian Ulrich as they will now go back to the Swiss tent and do their best to stay warm, stay focused, recover as well as possible before the next heat. The second, uh, the third heat of five, Niccolo Canclini of Italy, Giovanni Rossi, his compatriot. Baptiste Ermenreich and Jeremy Anselme of France, Finn Hirsch of Germany, and John Kissler of Switzerland.
takeoff. John Kissler of Switzerland on the far left as we're looking at this, the lineup. That was Jeremy Anselme and Baptiste Elmenreich of France. Niccolo Canclini of Italy, who is apparently feeling uh, having some muscle problems. I'm not exactly sure what, but uh, not feeling at his strongest, but still here in the heat. And there we had Giovanni Rossi uh, of Italy and Finn Hirsch of Germany. starting to brighten up here. Although it was a sunny day with a bit of cloud, it is definitely brightening up. That little bit of cloud seems to be dissipating. And they're off. This is the third of five heats for the senior men here in Cortina d'Ampezzo. As Finn Hirsch, the young German athlete, takes the lead there. Ahead of John Kissler of Switzerland, with Baptiste Elmenreich in behind them on the left. He chose to go left in behind Finn Hirsch. John Kissler just takes the lead, just though, uh, not for long, as Finn Hirsch seems to have pushed back into first position, going left as he did before. Ben Hirsch, Baptiste Enmanreich. Not much in it. Fast transitions all around. Giovanni Rossi, Jeremy Anselme, Niccolo Canclini, and John Kistler. Up into the foot part. These very beautifully built steps. Ben Hirsch, Baptiste Elmenreich, still one and two. Ben Hirsch being a bit slower there on his transition. Baptiste Elmenreich taking advantage of that. And it is going to be close here because there's Niccolo Canclini coming up on the other side. Jeremy Anselme in the yellow helmet though. Hanging in there with Finn Hirsch as Baptiste Marais takes the lead. As they go in here, this is going to be another great battle. Oh. And it is Jeremy Anselme who gets ahead of Baptiste Marais, who didn't quite manage to pick up his poles as quickly as he would probably have liked. my younger brother of Thibault. Hoping today to secure his second win of the overall cup. But here is Jeremy Anselme, and it's going to be a battle in for second place. But it's going to be Niccolo Canclini coming in second, coming right back from further up. Oh, and Finn Hirsch. A little bit of a stumble there. So Niccolo Cancli, a big part. No, oh. it was Giovanni Rossi. My humble apologies for getting the country wrong and the athlete wrong. My apologies to everybody and congratulations to Giovanni Rossi 
who very much took me surprise, surprise there. Uh, Giovanni Rossi takes the win ahead of Nico Canclini. Italy 1 and 2. Battistel Munreif, after a little bit of a uh, issue to picking up his poles there, just in transition, slips into third place. Well done, Giovanni Rossi. Third heat. Fourth heat. Oriel Cardona call. That was not him. <laughs> that is Andy Meyer, Andreas Meyer of Austria. But we have our... Her, uh, well, we'll just go through them since we're here. Andreas Meyer of Austria. Maximilien Drian du Chapois from Belgium. Sitting third in the overall rankings. Has not had a great weekend at uh, Cortina. Um, Otferrer Martinez, that was. Oriol Cardona call. The two Spaniards next to each other there on the start line. Pablo Giner of France, next to his compatriot, Robin Galando. As we're saying, Max de Leon recovering from something. We're not entirely sure what, but he was uh, did not have a great vertical. A better individual, but he will be hoping to do very well today on this. He is sitting third in the sprint rankings behind Aurel Cardonacol and Thibaut Anselme. the top five sprint athletes for the season in this heat. Oriol Cardona Call, Max Drian and Robin Galando. So this I think will prove to be a pretty fast and furious and very exciting heat. Heat number four. heading off up into the first set of diamonds. This is the fourth heat of the men. First of the women's semi-finals will be at 11.32, but here we have Romain Galando of France, ahead of his compatriot Pablo Giner, Max Drian of Belgium, Ot Ferrer and Aurel Cardona call as Robin Galando takes off, looking strong, with Pablo Giner behind him. Max Drian with Oriol Cardona Call. It is in fact Oriol Cardona Call comes in there a little bit slower, getting his skis out of his bag there though. Oriol has Max Drian making up for what he considered to be some disappointing results earlier this event, Saturday and Sunday as he goes into second place as Pablo Giner takes the lead. But Max Dion 
gosh, it's it's just changing all over the place in this heat. Max Rion now in third, but he will be fighting for a place. I think this is quite a fast round. He will be fighting for that lucky loser place if he can't overtake in those last few meters. Pablo Giner, Robin Galando, Max Grillon, Aurel Cardona call. Come over that jump. Heading round. Sharp left hand bend. And it's the two French. And who is going to. This is going to be so exciting. Looks like Aurel Cardona call might get it ahead of Pablo Giner, Robin Galando, and Max Grillon goes into fourth. That was a race. That was a very exciting race. Never underestimate an athlete with the experience of Royal Cardona Call. That was pretty impressive stuff. And as I thought, that was quite a fast heat. Robin Galando, currently one of the two most likely to go into the two fastest third places. And here we have the final of the men, the final heat for the men. Thibaut Salmé, Arnaud Gasser, Thomas Bussard and Patrick Perretin all of Switzerland. Cheng Zhao Zhang of China and Paramon Bill Pujol, Bill Pujol Paraman, my apologies, of Spain. Thomas Bussard there. Only Bussard twin to make it to the through the qualification rounds today. Cheng Hao Zhang, Arno Gasser of Verbier in Switzerland. Bill Pujol Paramon. Thibaut Anselme online for another overall victory and Patrick Perretin of Switzerland. The last heat here in Cortina d'Ampezzo. Cheng Hao Zhang proudly showing off his Chinese uniform, lining up amongst the best. Arnaud Gasser from the canton of Valais in Switzerland. And here we go. Arno Gasser taking a nice lead there ahead of his compatriot, Patrick Periton. And with Biel Pujol Paramon behind. Thibaut Salme in at the back, but as we know, that's not where he usually stays. Keep an eye on that yellow helmet. Arnaud Gesser looking at a nice lead there. As he takes the right. And fairly equal. Three to the right, three to the left. And that second set of diamonds. So far, so bunched as Thibaut Selmé starts to make his traditional classic shall we say 
move up the field as it is Biel Pujol Paramon ahead of Arnaud Gasser, Patrick Perton, Thibon Selmé, Cheng Hao Zhang, and Thomas Bussard. But Gasser makes it out first and up those steps as here comes Thibon Selmé, like somebody just set his skis on fire or his feet on fire as he comes powering up those steps to give Arno Gasser a run for his money. Gasser taking just a little bit longer to get that pole into his hand, but hanging in there. Tibois and May takes the lead. Arno Gasser in second, and it's the Chinese athlete in third in behind them. This is brilliant racing, really exciting. Joel Paraman of Spain as comes in as Thibon Selmé and Arnaud Gasser ski down probably fairly relaxed is the wrong word but uh, confident perhaps if it's all going well they will make it into the semis and a good gap there as they both take that jump nicely Thibon Selmé heads down for this slightly wobbly image there, but Arnaud Gasser takes it ahead of Thibon Selmé, Patrick Perrotin of Switzerland in third, Tinghao Zhang of China, Biel Pujol Paramon and Thomas Bussard bring up the rest of the field. not the fastest of the laps and so I would suggest that those making it into the semis in the men's will be Rocco Baldini of Italy from the second heat and Baptiste Ermenreich of France from the third heat. So here we are. It was indeed, as I said, Julia Morada and Marta Garcia Fares made it into the lucky loser spots for the women. And they will be heading into the semi-finals alongside those athletes you can see on your screen right now, which will be we will be seeing in just under two minutes, about a minute and a half, we will be seeing these women line up. And here they come. kicking her skis in the turquoise helmet and beside her Celia Peria Pesce Marianne Faton number three makes her way into her spot that is Marta Garcia Fares of Spain so here we have it Emily Harrop of France, her compatriot, Celia Peria Pesce, Marianne Faton of Switzerland, another French athlete, Lena Bonnel, Mariana Yegichkova of Slovakia, and Marta Garcia Fares of Spain. This is a punchy, punchy semi final. Obviously, as one would expect at this stage of the game, but these are some of the best. noise you can hear the scuff scuff sound that is the course probably volunteers I suspect uh, flattening out and making sure that this is as smooth as possible for these athletes to go into the semi-final I am Faton there of Switzerland Marianne 
Caton is the current European champion. Let's sprint and the Swiss champion as well. Former world champion. Here we go. This is a very exciting final. And they're off. First of the semi-finals. If I said final, my apologies. I meant semis. Just this is quite an exciting lineup here as Marian Fatton takes a early lead ahead of Emily Harrop with Celia Peria Pesce. No, it's Mariana Yegachikova up on the right inside there. Yegachikova is the world champion, the former European champion. She lost her title to Mariana uh, to Marianne Fatton in January in Flen. Marianne Fatton, uh, Mariana Yegachikova goes right, followed by Emily Harrop. On the left there in the red uniform, Marianne Fatton just catches her ski on one of the green bits of ribbon. Uh, she catches her, caught her pole, actually, on a bit of green ribbon as they head up there. Starting spread out, but Emily Harrop really pushing Marianna Yegachikova now. It's currently Yegachikova ahead of Harrop, Fatton, Garcia Fares. And there you see it so close between the top two there. And only a second between them and Marianne Faton. Celia Peria Pesce in fourth. Marta Garcia Fares and Lena Bonnell in behind them. And this is going to be an absolute battle. Celia Peria Pesce makes it into third place. Marianne Faton attempting the steps two at a time to see if she can catch up some ground on Celia Peria Pesce, but it is Emily Harrop and Mariana Yegachikova almost neck and Negachikova almost neck and neck and it is coming down to these super fast transitions and look at this these two athletes followed by two more of the best just absolutely powering up this hill Emily Harrop a tiny slip there on her skis but we've seen slips on this part before it is a bit no, well, Slippy, more, uh, as they come into this last transition uh, before they head down the hill. This is the first of the semi-finals for the women. If you've just joined us here in Cortina, Cortina d'Ampezzo, Emily Harrop was ahead of Maria Degrichkova and takes off ahead of her on the downhill. These two old rivals, they have been for the last, certainly the last three seasons since Emily Harrop really started to become one of the leading lights in this uh, sport and certainly also in this discipline. These two have battled out many, many exciting finishes, uh, races against each other and know each other very well. And it is actually Marianne Faton who takes a second place and Celia Pelia Pesce goes into third, but and Yegochikova slips into fourth. Just a quick recap here of this first semi final for the women. But let us turn our eyes to the second of the semi finals. Tatiana Paller, Caroline Ulrich, Julia Morada, Anna Alonso Rodriguez, Ivona Janusik, and Johanna Kimer. 
a huge spread of countries here. Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Spain, Poland and Austria. And for the moment, though I'm not entirely sure that that is 100% correct, we have potentially Celia Pieria Pese and Mariana Yukachikova going through to the semis, but we shall see. Anna Hemer of Austria, we just saw Julia Morada of Italy, Marta Garcia Fares of Spain. Alonso Rodriguez, Caroline Ulrich, Tatiana Paller, and Ivona Janosik on the far right. This is the second of the semi-finals for the senior women here in Cortina d'Ampezzo. Ivona Janosik strikes out ahead of Caroline Ulrich. Tatiana Paller in third for the moment. Anna Alonso Rodriguez, Johanna Hemer and Julia Murada at the back. And it's Caroline Ulrich taking Anna Alonso in behind her on the right-hand side. Ivona Janosik joins them as they come through this first set of diamonds. Neck and neck there. Oh, it's a bit of elbowing going on here and some maneuvering as Anna Alonso comes out of these ahead of Ivona Janosik and Caroline Ulrich. Anna Alonso Rodriguez of Spain coming up into this transition. In the lead ahead of Ivona Janosik, Caroline Ulrich, Tatiana Paller. Johanna Hemer and Julia Murada just coming in now at the top of your screens as Anna Alonso powers up there and Caroline Ulrich gets out ahead of Ivona Janosik and they are battering up here. Caroline Ulrich taking the steps as many as she can at a time to overtake Anna Alonso. Tatiana Paller closing on Ivona Janosik for third place. And it's Caroline Uli who gets out first, ahead of Anna Alonso. Just had to go for a second time for that pole. Tatiana Paller out behind her in third. Ivona Janosik working hard there to overtake Tatiana Paller. Battery level is low. The aircraft will return to the home port in 10 seconds. Anna Alonso ahead of Caroline Uli, but just as they come in to this transition, Tatiana Paller is third, Ivona Janosik in behind her, Johanna Hemer. Caroline Uli takes off ahead there of Anna Alonso Rodriguez of Spain. Caroline Ulrich comes in to take the win. And who's it going to be in second? 
it's Tatiana Paller of Germany taking the guaranteed spot into the final with Anna Alonso going into potentially the lucky loser spot. But I think landing probably not. Because the first semi-final was faster and I think that both Celia Piriapese and Mariana Yukichikova had a faster time than Anna Alonso so they will potentially go in as the lucky losers and here we are uh, Arno Lieta of course takes the spot uh, alongside Robin Galando just knocking Rocco Baldini out into the lucky losers for spots for the men. There are the semi-final lineups. Semi-final one and semi-final two, as it's Arno Lieta and Batist Elmenreich who make it through. We are powering along. We are already on to the men's semis. But it's in just under a minute. Take off. In this semi-final, here we have Florian Ulrich, Florian Sotel, Loïc Dubois, and Nico Martinez de Albornoz Marquez. Arno Lieta, and I think who we didn't see on the far end, on the far left, Niccolo Canclini of Italy. Three Swiss athletes in this semi final. And off they go, this is the first of the men's semi finals. No Niccolo Canclini, so we are five men in this final, semi-final, my apologies. No sign of Niccolo Canclini, so perhaps that muscle pain we were hearing about has just been enough for today. And it's Arno Lieta in first. Up through that first section of skinning, followed by Nico Martinez, Loic Dubois, Florian Sotel, and Florian Ulrich. Arno Lieta out nice and quickly there. Inigo Martinez behind him. Nice transition there from both of these athletes. As the battle for third is between Loïc Dubois and Florian Soutel. Loïc Dubois taking the lead there into third. Arno Lieta still in the lead. Inigo Martinez, Loïc Dubois, Florian Soutel. As Arno Lieta, I risk saying making this look easy, although we absolutely know it is not. 
looking very relaxed in his transitions and his ski down here, feeling quite confident. Over that jump. As he comes quite comfortably in to win this semi final ahead of Inigo Martinez, Dalbornos, uh, Marquez, and Loic Dubois and Florian Sotel. A fairly textbook example of how to win a sprint race there from one of the greatest on the World Cup circuit, Anolieta. Very relaxed, very calm, no mistakes. Tranquille, as they say in French. As we get more pictures of this utterly, utterly glorious World Natural Heritage Area declared by UNESCO in 2009. What a glorious backdrop for this, these finals. It was Thibault Anselme just looking into his boots there, into his uh, bindings, I beg your pardon. In this semi-final, Thibaut Semi of France, Aurel Cardona Col of Spain, Robin Galando of France, Giovanni Rossi of Italy, Pablo Giner of France, and Arno Gasser of Switzerland. Two yellow helmets on the left, and the number one is Tibon Selme, Giovanni Rossi of Italy, Oreo Cardona Col of Spain, and just standing up there at the end from Verbier in Switzerland, Arno Gasser. Seconds to the start. And this is it. The semi finals, the second semi final for the men. As Arno Gasser takes an early lead. And Thibault Anselme sits in at the back and just waits. Into this section, we see Robin Galando leading ahead of Aurel Cardona Col with Pablo Giner in behind them. Tibon Salme already into fourth. Giovanni Rossi and Arno Gasser coming in behind them. Robin Galando 
takes off. Oh, and this is going to be exciting. These are some fast and strong. And look at Tibor Semi. He's done it again. Up through that boot pack like something is on fire. And he is being chased by something terrifying. But it is a supremely impressive to come right from the back to power through. Little pause there. Just enough time there. Everybody seemed to let Oriel Cardona call come through between the two Frenchmen. The two following Frenchmen as Robin Galando struggling there a bit in fourth. Thibault Selmay comes in. In the lead, Oriel Cardona call behind him. Pablo Giner, Robin Galando quite far back in the box as it is Anselme ahead of Oriel Cardona call as they head down. For them, it will be their penultimate downhill of the day because they will both, all things being equal, make it to the final. Thibault Selmé making that look ridiculously easy once he sort of seemed to decide to just put on the turbocharge and power up those steps and it was all his from there. Oriel Cardona call in second, Pablo Giner and Robin Galando third and fourth respectively. Robin Galando, just a quick peek there to see who was behind him, but he should have known. It was Thibaut Anselme on his way to his second overall win. And we will be heading to the women's finals probably in about just over 10 minutes. Syria Pese and Mariana Yuchikova did, in fact, make it into the final as the two fastest of their second and third, third and fourth fastest of their heat. Semi-final, I beg your pardon. So there we will have Caroline Ulrich, Emily Harrop, Marianne Faton, Tatiana Pallark, Celia Pierre Pese and Mariana Yuchikova in the women's final at 12.07 local time which is about eight minutes away, seven and a half minutes away. And making it into the final for the men, Thibon Senme, Arno Lieta, Aurel Cardona Call, Inigo Martinez, Del Bornos Marquez, uh, and with Loic Dubois and Florence Hotel taking the two fastest lucky loser spots to make them to make up the final six for the men. And they will be going at 12.13 local time. She's just under 20 minutes away. of course follow the live results on MSO you can see the QR code there in the bottom left hand corner of your screen and you will find the results as they happen you get who is who has raced who has who is about to race and all the timings for the whole day in their in a very easy to follow fashion format as the Swiss athletes <laughs> keep themselves warm on their turbo trainers. It's Caroline Ulrich. And the, uh, one of the other Swiss in the finals for the men is Louis Dubois. And we leave you for a few minutes with the highlights of the individual race which took place on Sunday.
dedicto e non ho fatto questi cari, e mi devo andare a sapere che io, a tutto il mondo. Se vuoi sei va, sopra di me c'è tipo una baita, sotto la della montagna, parto stretto, vado ad aprire. Va benissimo, grazie. Sì, sì. Home point updated.
Che splendida località ragazzi bellissime montagne. And here we are. This is the women in the final. Those are the skis and boots of Marianne Faton. There's Mariana Yegochikova. They will be joined by Emily Harrop, Caroline Ulrich, Tatiana Paller, and Celia Peria Bessé. A very familiar, absolute top notch. Start list, start list there. Mariana Yugichik over there on the left. Celia Peria Pese just putting some snow on her neck. Cool her down, wake her up. All of the above. Tatiana Paller of Germany. Emily Harrop, who will, all things being equal, walk away from the, potentially <laughs> with the sprint title, as she already has the overall title in the bag. Caroline Ulrich we had there and Marianne Faton also cooling herself down. It's been a hot weekend of racing. Both the vertical and the individual were extremely hot at the weekend. lining up on their marks. The final, the final final of the season. And they're off. Two Swiss, two French, a German and a Slovakian as they head off to see who will bring home the final victory of the season. Will it be Caroline Uli who won the first sprint of the season? Or will it be the world champion? Or will it be the European champion? Or will it be the overall leader of the entire, uh, the winner of the entire season? It is a big, big 
punchy as I, it's a word I use often, but it is a good one because these are the best of the best up there on the hill in here in the Dolomites, in this beautiful, beautiful national park, world natural heritage area, I should say. Here comes Emily Harrop into this second, uh, this first transition up past that second set of diamonds, followed by Caroline Ulrich, Marianne Fatton, Tatiana Paller, Celia Peria Pesce, Mariana Yegachikova, I think just not got it in her today, has been just not feeling brilliant. But to make it to the final and not feeling brilliant is mightily impressive. As Emily Harrop powers up there, Marianne Faton, uh, Caroline Nulich, by big pardon, behind her. And Emily Harrop comes out of there so quickly. Great transition. Mar uh, Caroline Nulich, oh, got the pain face on, really, really doing her best to keep up with. There we are, Emily Harrop skins off and away she goes. And she is taking this. You can hear the crowd going wild as Emily Harrop comes down here to not only win this race as she does it she wins the race she wins the globe for the sprint title and she has won the overall as well oh no <laughs> that's not what you want to happen <laughs> as Marianne Vaton comes in behind her <laughs> Caroline Ulrich flops to the ground third place a podium for her Tatiana Paller is fifth behind Celia Peria Pesce. And there you can see what an absolute battle it was as Emily Harrop hugs Celia Peria Pesce. We just see Mariana Yegochikova popping over the line behind us. And that was a great, great final. I think we probably, it finished as we expected it would be with uh, Emily Harrop taking her final win of the season. A disappointing finish to the season for Mariana Yegochikova, but uh, as I said, a supreme effort to do that well while not feeling terribly on form. Marianne, Marianne Faton comes in second. Caroline Ulrich, who has just had a cracking season in the senior category, really uh, coming in third, as another podium place for her. And there we go. It is the men's final, Thibaut Salmé of France. And he will be hoping to do the same as Emily, take the sprint title and the overall. It is Thibaut Salmé up there with Aurel Cardona-Cole, Arno Lieta, Florian Sotel, Inigo Martinez, Del Borno Marquez and Loic Dubois.
and they're off. That's them off. This is the men's final. We are, it's the final final of the finals here in Cortina d'Ampezzo. As it looks like Oriol Cardona Cole. to this boot pack. It is Arno Lieta. My apologies, Arno Lieta, head of Thibaut Anselme, Inigo Martinez behind them, Loïc Dubois, and Florian Sotel. Thibaut Anselme taking those stairs in his now, by now, familiar style. And away he goes. You can hear the support behind Thibaut Anselme. And you can hear the bells ringing and the crowd shouting. Monselme out there ahead of Arno Lieta. As Tibon Selme takes that jump. And comes down across the line. to take the win, to take the sprint title, and to take the overall title for the season. Arno Lieta in... They know, he knows. Thibaut Salme, who had two years in second place behind Robert Antonioli and then Michele Boscacci, and now has two years in a row at the top of the Schimo tree. Congratulations to him. This was it, this was the final of the men's. And there he is, finishing in style over that last jump and in to take his second title in a row. Thibault Anselme. Thibault Anselme, Arnaud Lieta, Loïc Dubois. 
in third. An excellent, excellent third place for the young Swiss athlete. Inigo Martinez, Florian Sotel and Oriol Cardona call. Not often we see him in the sixth place on the final. But there we are. What a great uh, victory there for Thibaut Anselme. Well, what a season it has been. What an incredible, incredible week of racing. Season of racing, plus this final long weekend, if you like. Of course, we are now in well into the week. Um, but look at this, this is the next generation. Up there. If I'm not too old, hopefully, that will be one I am commentating on in a few years' time. Swiss support team there will be rushing down to support, to congratulate both Arnaud Lieta and Loïc Dubois as well, of course, as Marianne Fatton and Caroline Ulrich. So in both men's and women's, it was France, Switzerland, Switzerland. for flower ceremony in, in a little while but and hopefully we will get to have a word with both Emily Harrop and Thibon Selmé I very much doubt this is their last race for the week though I should imagine they will be racing together in the final mixed relay tomorrow and there is the final results Ah, now that's interesting because there is Caroline Ulrich, Ulrich down to fifth place. Um, Emily Harrop, Marianne Fatton and Celia Peria Pessé, top three, Tatiana Paller, Caroline Ulrich and Mariana Yegorchikova. I am not sure. Uh, yes, it looks like Caroline Ulrich took a 15 second penalty, although for what I cannot tell you, but she has a penalty uh, in the timings, uh, the live timings. That is extremely unfortunate, a very unfortunate end to the season for Caroline, although still in the final. And it looks like we might be getting an interview with Thibaut Selmé any second. Thibaut Anselme, what a fantastic end of the season. Another victory in the sprint race. The Globes, uh, the specialty cup for the sprint, uh, a dream. Yeah, yeah, a dream. I'm very happy with this uh, small club. Uh, yeah, today was in super shape. Uh, more stronger than the other at the, at the end of the uh, end part of the, of the sprint. So, yeah, in my head I say today I can win. And I'm very happy to, to, do, the, to do that. The win today is a win of the small club and the overall World Cup. I'm really proud uh, of with my season, so perfect. Perfect. Uh, you were always uh, chasing the other just behind, but then uh, you were so fast uh, in the last part and in the downhill. Yeah, uh, it's difficult for me to, to start very with speed uh, on the flat part. Uh, so I manage my, my, uh, my race and yeah, I have the possibility to, uh, to increase uh, the rhythm at the end. It's, uh, it's my body wants uh, to, to do that and, and it's a win today, so it's okay. <laughs> My super course aujourd'hui, je suis vraiment content de, de gagner ce petit globe. C'était loin d'être fait. Oriol était pas très loin. 
Donc euh, voilà, je suis très content d'avoir tenu ce, cette première place et de terminer la saison avec une victoire, c'est super bien. Avec le, aussi le, le classement général de la Coupe du Monde. Voilà, je suis super fier de ma saison, fier de toute l'équipe qui est autour de moi qui, qui m'aide à arriver à ce niveau-là, mes proches. Et voilà, c'est parti pour on se, on se voit l'année prochaine. Et bon, demain il y a encore le relais mixte, on va essayer de, de gagner une nouvelle fois. Thank you very much, congratulations. Merci. Merci. Thibaut Anselme, they're racking up the globes. Uh, as he said, it was not a given. It was absolutely not a given because Oriol Cardonacol also in that final. If he had won, he could have displaced him, but he didn't. And here, I think we are going to get an interview with Emily Harrop alongside Christine Cavanier, our course commentator. Emily Harrop, another victory in the season in the sprint race. It's the fourth victory in this uh, season. The globes, uh, the sprint globes that goes to you as well as uh, the overall globes. So it wasn't uh, be better. <laughs> no, it definitely couldn't be better. Uh, the sprint races are always the kind of the most um, the most stressful, I have to say. So uh, when you cut, you finish on a good note in a sprint race, it's like a proper explosion of uh, of emotions and to be able to get the globe yeah another year um, it's just like a dream to stay on this level so uh, it's amazing and yeah to finish the uh, season of individual races uh, on a high note like this it's really really great it was not easy from the start to the end because you were the best six in the ranking the best in the final yeah no definitely there are a lot of strong women out there um, they're all just getting stronger and stronger so uh, I know that I have to really bring my best game um, and so yeah I was I had to really stay in a strong mindset today um, I'm so grateful to have all these girls around us to, to push and to get better and so uh, so yeah I'm very satisfied <laughs> Ouais, euh, non, une super course aujourd'hui, je pouvais pas m'attendre à mieux euh, de pouvoir finir la saison euh, des courses euh, individuelles, enfin seule euh, euh, sur euh, une victoire, bah c'est juste incroyable. Et ouais, c'était clairement pas facile parce que bah il y a beaucoup de femmes très très fortes euh, sur le circuit en sprint maintenant. Donc il faut vraiment avoir son bah être dans un super jour et amener euh, un, une menta, un mental euh, d'acier. Donc euh, aujourd'hui bah c'est c'est chose faite et je suis vraiment vraiment contente. Bravo. Congratulations. Emily Harrop, what an absolute corker of a year for her. She wins her the sprint title, she wins the individual title, and she has won the overall title as well as being third in the vertical rankings. What an absolute bumper year for her. She has now had three title overall titles in a row. As I said earlier, that's her up there with Laetitia Roux, and that is pretty good company. We will shortly be going to flower ceremony. And then before, uh, after that, uh, we'll be done, but we'll be back tomorrow with the final mixed relay again, live from 10.20. But here, let's have a look at some replays from today.
There's some amazing f- racing here today in the final. A beautiful day here in Cortina d'Ampezzo in northern Italy, where we have seen just some unbelievably strong performances. We've seen some uh, some athletes having maybe some disappointing performances due to illness or not being on their best form. But it has been a long season. And between this and the last time we were World Cup racing, uh, there have been 